If you read that new study, uh, something shocking about uh, like one out of three uh, women who drink Diet Coke during pregnancy had an autistic kid. Oh my God. Um, so it says a team of researchers said they have observed a link between autism diagnosis and boys and their mothers drinking at least one diet soda daily or consuming the equivalent amount of the sweetener aspartame during pregnancy or while breastfeeding, according to new study. Imagine walking through your local supermarket, passing by aisle after aisle, filled with products promising to be sugar-free, diet, and low calories. What's the secret ingredient behind these claims? Aspartame. A chemical sweetener found in over 6,000 products worldwide. From your favorite Diet Coke to the sugar-free gum in your pocket, aspartame is everywhere. But how did this artificial sweetener discovered by accident become a staple in so many products? And more importantly, is it safe? The popular artificial sweetener aspartame that's found in everything from diet soda to chewing gum is back under renewed scrutiny. Aspartame is in a lot of things. Cereals, gums, candies, gelatins, even toothpaste, and of course diet sodas. No, sorry for interrupting. Uh, aspartame, as you know, is found in thousands of products like diet sodas and sugar-free gum. And for a product, you know, so widely used, um, there should be no shadow of a doubt about its safety. The FDA, which is the federal agency that's ultimately responsible for ensuring that the chemicals in our food are safe, should similarly take steps to protect consumers from aspartame as they are required to by federal law. Both FDA and industry can and should make it easier for consumers mm -hmm. to make healthy and safe choices at a grocery store. Aspartame was discovered in 1965 by chemist James Schlatter, who was working on an anti-ulcer drug. In an unexpected twist, he licked his finger and noticed the sweet taste, leading to the birth of a new artificial sweetener. Have you ever heard of aspartame? No, what's that? Uh, nah. Have you heard of it? Aspartame? Aspartame? Have you heard of it? Have you ever heard of aspartame? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever heard of aspartame? No. No, I've never heard of it. What is it? Have you ever heard of aspartame? Uh, no, I haven't. Have you ever heard of aspartame? No. Have you ever heard of aspartame? Aspartame? Uh, no, I can't say I have. Have you ever heard of aspartame? But as aspartame became more widely used, families unknowingly incorporated this chemical into their daily diets. The question we must ask ourselves today is, at what cost? Aspartame is made up of three components. Aspartic acid... How the f*** was I supposed to get that on? One second. What? <laughs> Aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methanol. Together they form a compound 200 times sweeter than sugar, but with zero calories. This might sound like a miracle solution, but the reality is far more complex. When you consume aspartame, it interacts with your taste receptors, tricking your brain into thinking you've consumed sugar. But this illusion doesn't just satisfy your sweet tooth, it can actually lead to increased cravings for sweet foods, potentially leading to weight gain and other metabolic issues. The food industry was quick to adopt aspartame, marketing it as a healthy alternative to sugar. Advertisements from the 1980s and the 1990s promised that you could enjoy all of the sweetness without the calories, leading to a surge in popularity. But what these advertisements didn't mention was the potential health risks lurking behind this sweet facade. The journey of aspartame to our supermarket shelves wasn't smooth. In fact, it was riddled with controversy and scientific disputes. Initial studies on aspartame raised significant concerns about its safety, leading the FDA to reject its approval several times. The FDA's hesitation stemmed from studies suggesting that aspartame could be linked to brain tumours in rats. Despite this, the food industry pushed hard for its approval, leading to years of intense debate and investigation. In 1981, the FDA finally approved aspartame for use in dry goods, and in 1983, it was approved for use in beverages, like Diet Coke. This approval, however, was not without controversy. Some accuse the FDA of succumbing to industry pressure, and the shadow of those initial safety concerns have never fully disappeared. As aspartame became more prevalent, so did concerns about its safety. Early studies linked aspartame to various health issues, including headaches, neurological disorders, and even cancer. Breaking news to get to out of the World Health Organization, which just in the last couple of minutes says aspartame is a possible cancer risk. The World Health Organization now classifies the low-calorie sweetener aspartame as a possible carcinogen. The WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer is now classifying aspartame as a carcinogen, meaning it's capable of causing cancer, specifically liver cancer. The WHO has made the important recognition that there is evidence suggesting that aspartame causes cancer in humans. So although more research might be needed to better understand the possible relationship between aspartame and cancer, this should be concerning for consumers 
industry, and food safety officials. The Center for Science and the Public Interest has long advised that consumers should avoid aspartame based precisely on concerns that it might cause cancer. And now, this respected international authority on cancer is echoing those concerns. So as a toxicologist, where do you stand on this? I think consumers should avoid aspartame, but, and this is very important, they should not do so by replacing it with sugar. These findings spark public concern and a media frenzy. Personal testimonies began to surface from individuals who reported experiencing adverse effects from consuming aspartame. From debilitating migraines to serious neurological conditions, these stories added a human face to the growing concerns. The scientific community was divided. Some researchers called for more rigorous studies, while others dismissed these concerns as overblown. But one thing was clear, the safety of aspartame was far from settled. In recent decades, autism diagnoses have risen dramatically, leading many to wonder what could be causing this increase. One theory that has gained attention is the potential connection between aspartame and autism. My last two children were diagnosed with autism and um, I am very, very passionate about anything to do with, you know, what's triggering it because there's, there's been a rise in it. And it's just ridiculous. Aspartame was approved for widespread use in the early 1980s, and not too long after, autism rates began to climb. Some researchers suggest that the phenylalanine in aspartame could interfere with brain development, potentially contributing to the rise in autism. Aspartame, which is an artificial sweetener that's around 200 times sweeter than sucrose, is found in Diet Coke, and phenylalanine is part of aspartame. You can see here, aspartame is made up of another amino acid, aspartic acid, phenylalanine in a methanol group. So phenylalanine affects your brain. It's no wonder that aspartame also does as well. So when I'm working with my patients and clients, there can be possible of nausea, headaches, there's a possibility of constipation, digestive complaints, upset stomach. These are things that could be possible, even fatigue and anxiety can be associated with taking phenylalanine. However, this theory is highly controversial. While the timeline is striking, many experts caution that correlation does not imply causation. Other factors such as increased awareness and changes in diagnostic criteria may also explain the rise in autism rates. Still, the possibility of a connection cannot be dismissed outright. Beyond autism, aspartame has been linked to a range of other serious health issues. Studies have suggested that aspartame may increase the risk of cancer, migraines, metabolic disorders and more. One particularly shocking study found that rats fed high doses of aspartame developed brain tumours. While these findings were initially dismissed, they've since been revisited by scientists concerned about the long-term exposure to aspartame in humans. Personal stories from those who've experienced health problems add a human element to the scientific data, underscoring the real-world impact of aspartame consumption. While the research is still ongoing, the potential risks associated with aspartame are enough to give anyone pause. The food and beverage industry has consistently defended aspartame, citing numerous studies that support its safety. Companies continue to market it as a healthy alternative to sugar, downplaying any potential risks. But critics argue that many of those studies were funded by the industry itself, leading to biased results that favour aspartame. This has led to ongoing scepticism and calls for more independent research. The influence of the food industry on regulatory decisions is a point of contention, with many advocating for stricter oversight and greater transparency in the research process. Today, aspartame is approved for use by regulatory bodies worldwide, including the FDA and the EFSA. However, some countries have taken a more cautious approach with stricter regulations or outright bans on aspartame. A global comparison reveals varying levels of acceptance. For example, some European countries have more stringent regulations while others fully endorse its use. Recent studies continue to investigate the potential health impacts of aspartame, with some suggesting new risks. The debate is ongoing, and as more information emerges, advocacy groups are calling for greater transparency and more rigorous research. As we've seen, the story of aspartame is complex and fraught with controversy. From its approval process to its potential links to serious health issues, aspartame remains a topic of intense debate. So what can you do? Being informed is the first step. Read labels carefully and be aware of what you're putting into your body. Consider reducing your intake of artificial sweeteners and exploring natural alternatives. The health of future generations may depend on the choices we make today. By making informed decisions and advocating for more research, we can ensure that the food supply is safe and healthy for everyone. Also, I don't know if you lot know this, but not much people can even taste artificial sweeteners. There's certain people where it, like, it really stands out on their palate. Me being one of them, and I only know two other people that's like that. But it is a real, real thing. Like When I order certain drinks from fast food places, I, it's hard to make the decision because I know I'm going to taste that chalk. Like, it's actually disgusting. But yeah, peace. 
In a study, the researcher at the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio asked the parents of 235 children with an autism spectrum disorder and 121 children without autism who were the study's controls to complete a retrospective questionnaire about their diet soda and aspartame intake while pregnant or breastfeeding their children. Researchers asked biological mothers, while you were pregnant or breastfeeding your child, how often did you drink diet drinks containing artificial sweeteners? Please count diet sodas first, such as Diet Coke, Diet Dr. Pepper, and Diet Sprite, and then other diet drinks such as Citrus Light, Sugar-Free Kool-Aid, Slim Fast, and other light drinks. Note, not all the diet beverages contain aspartame. The researchers did not ask women to only think about aspartame containing diet beverages they consume while pregnant or breastfeeding. However, all drinks listed in the survey's examples do contain aspartame. <coughs> Team found that boys with autism had more than three times the likelihood of having a mother who drank diet soda daily while pregnant or breastfeeding than boys without autism, per the findings published in the peer-reviewed journal Nutrients. Whoa. The, the researchers did not find a statistically significant association with girls. That's interesting. Hmm. Why it's more difficult to diagnose girls with autism than boys. These associations do not prove causality. That's oh, it's a different link. Okay, yeah, just, but taken in concert with reports from earlier studies of increased prematurity and cardiometabolic health impacts among infants and children exposed daily to diet beverages, holy shit, or aspartame during pregnancy, our findings raise new questions about the potential neurological impacts that need to be addressed. 